Hello everyone, welcome to the uncut version of my tutorial on setting up a MicroTik virtual router on Hetzner Cloud. If you are interested in the short form version of this video, check out the TLDR on my channel. Here is an overview of what we are going to do in this video. First, we're going to create the private networks. Then we're going to add the MicroTik server and install MicroTik. After that's done, we'll perform the initial login and change the admin password, set up DHCP clients for our private networks, set the correct MTU, verify that DHCP is working, and then finally, we'll set up a second private server to verify connectivity and ping the private server through MicroTik. Let's get started by setting up a private cloud network. You can use as many networks as you like. I'll create two for this example use case, one for development and one for production. When creating the network, you define three fields, name, network zone, and the IP range. You can choose any name you like. I'll choose network development and network production. It helps if it's a name that implies what the network is used for. I'll explain the network zone when we create the server. Just note here that you can choose three zones, EU Central, US East, and US West. I'll choose EU Central as that's where I'll be running my servers for this tutorial. Finally, the IP range. Again, you can choose any private network as defined in RFC 1918. If you can, try to avoid overlapping IP ranges in your network or organization's network. That will make setting up side-to-side -side tunnels or more complex network scenarios easier. Now to add the actual server. I want to focus on the location selection first. As you can see, every location has a name and a network zone. That's the same network zone found during network creation. Any servers created in the same network zone can communicate with each other. Servers in different network zones will not be able to communicate through Hetzner's private network. Given that I created my network in EU Central, I can choose Nuremberg, Falkenstein or Helsinki. All right, that's the location taken care of. Selecting the image is very simple. Choose anything, it doesn't matter. We'll boot into the rescue system once the server has been created to override the boot disk with MikroTik's disk image. Hetzner offers several different server types. This will determine the type and number of resources reserved for your server. As you can see, the price scales depending on the number of cores and size of memory and disk space. For MikroTik, you can usually get away with very limited resources. The CX11 instance type with 1 vCPU and 2 GB of memory should be more than enough for our use case. On to networking, once again. Also quite simple. We'll select the private networks that we created in the beginning. This will instruct Hetzner to attach one virtual interface per selected private network to the server. Out of the box, MikroTik will work with IPv4, so you can unselect IPv6. If you want to experiment further, you can leave public IPv6 checked and configure it later on, but that will not be in the scope of this video. If you just set up a new account, you will not have any SSH keys. I have added my key already, you can add yours now. It is not strictly necessary as you will use username and password to log into MikroTik anyways. You can leave all remaining settings at their default. We won't use network attached volumes, backups, placement groups or the cloud init config. We won't need a Hetzner Cloud Firewall, as MikroTik is a firewall in itself, so we'll manage all rules directly using MikroTik. You can optionally set custom labels and a custom name for your server. Once you're done, click Create and Buy Now. It may take a couple of seconds for the server to be up and running. You can proceed once the status indicator next to the server's name turns from gray and spinny to green and not spinny. Once that's done, we click on the server, navigate to Rescue and select Enable Rescue and Power Cycle. The rescue system will prevent the server from booting using the default boot drive and instead boot a lightweight Linux distribution with some utilities pre-installed. We'll be using one of those utilities to override the boot disk with MikroTik's disk image. Let's switch to the terminal now. As I'm a Tanix engineer, I'm using Tmux and NeoVim, by the way. Ignore the Windows terminal. SSH into your server. The welcome message should inform you that the rescue system is running. If you don't see this message and instead are shown the default message of the image you chose during server creation, you may need to reboot or try to enable the rescue system again. What you should be able to see here as well are the network interfaces you attach during server creation. Note that DHCP will only be enabled for the public interface, so you won't see any private IPs here. We'll switch to MikroTik's website now to obtain the disk image download URL for the latest CHR version. Open the cloud hosted router tab and find the row titled raw disk image. You can choose between four versions, one LTS version, two stable versions, and one testing version. If you want to use CHR version 6, I suggest you use the LTS version. If you want to use the latest version, which is v7, I suggest you use the stable version. You can find notable differences between the versions in MikroTix documentation. So check which features you may need and make sure they are supported in either v6 or v7. I'll choose the latest v7 stable image. The setup steps shown in this video should be applicable to both v6 and v7. The UI looks a bit different though. Going back to the terminal, we'll download the image using curl, unzip it 
and then use DD to write the image. The flags used for DD are OF for output file, we'll write to slash dev slash SDA, with a block size, that's the BS flag, of one megabyte. Once that's done, you reboot the server. Now you can open the server IP in a browser and log in using the initial username admin. The initial password is blank, so you can just click login. It will ask you to set a new password, so set a new secure password now. It can help to reload the page after you've changed the password. Very nice. Here's our Mikrotik UI. Initially, you should see an overview of all attached interfaces. You can see the R next to Ether1, meaning that it's running. Ether2 and Ether3 aren't running yet. Let's fix that in a bit and configure all DHCP clients first though. Navigate to IP DHCP client and add one DHCP client for each of the private networks you attached earlier. So click on add new and select interface Ether2. You can leave all other settings at their default. Let's go back to the interfaces for now and make sure they're actually running. What's the issue? Well, it's the MTU. Hetzner's public interface uses an MTU, maximum transmission unit, of 1500 bytes. Hetzner's private cloud networks use an MTU of 1450 bytes. Mikrotik will actually show you this as well under actual MTU when you select the interface. So let's correct this by setting the MTU to the actual MTU for both Ether2 and Ether3. Once that's done, you should see the little R for all three interfaces. Let's go back to the DHCP clients we just created and check our IP addresses. Hmm, that's weird. Ether2 and Ether3 still don't have an IP. If you select one of the clients, you may see status requesting. If that is the case, try to reboot your router. After rebooting and logging back in, we should be able to see not just our public, but also a private IP for each private network we attached in the beginning. Now you're essentially done and can continue to configure your Mikrotik router. I'd like to do one more thing, which is set up a second server in one of the private networks to make sure we can ping it through Mikrotik. To do that, let's go back to the Hetzner console and create a new server. You can once again choose any location within the same network zone that your private network is in. Select any image and the cheapest instance type available. For this example, I'll deselect all public IPs and select the development network I created in the beginning for this server. You can leave all other settings at their defaults. We don't want to work with this server. We just need to ping it. Let's wait a couple of seconds for the server to start and take note of the private IP. You can now go back to Mikrotik and select Tools Ping in the sidebar. Enter the private IP of the new server and click Start. And voila, there you go. You set up your first Mikrotik server on Hetzner. Let me know what other topics interest you in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me help you learn more. See you next time.